has been bitten by a mosquito and probably many more times than just once. A female mos mosquito has an enormously complex feeding mechanism. She has sensory organs that she can use to detect a victim and home in on the blood. She has soaring mouth parts, which she can use to puncture the skin and get into the veins to the blood. She has these fine tubes that can inject saliva, which helps the blood flow. She can take mere seconds to take a blood meal. Most of the time, you don't even know you've been bitten. Now, interestingly, males do not possess these specialized mouth parts. Their only function is to find a female, mate, and then die. This is a female feeding on my arm. <laughs> now she has detected odors from my body. She's homed in on those and found an area of exposed skin, landed and started to take a blood meal. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds for her to become fully engorged with blood. She uses this blood as a nutrient source to be able to produce her eggs, her next batch of offspring. Now, a single mosquito can produce over 500 offspring in her lifetime, which is about two weeks. <laughs> now, there are many diseases spread by mosquitoes. And I'm sure you've all heard about malaria. Now, I'm going to talk about specifically a disease called dengue. Now, malaria is a parasite, but dengue is a virus. Dengue fever affects over 390 million people every year. And it causes very severe symptoms that can last weeks, months even. Another name for dengue fever is bone break fever, just to give you an idea of what those symptoms can be like. And in fact, there's a member of the audience who's had chikungunya, which is a very similar disease to dengue, and she was talking about how serious the symptoms were. Now, dengue fever is the fastest growing disease in the world today. It has increased over 30 times since the 1960s. There is no vaccination and there is no medication available. The child that you see here, unfortunately she died from dengue shortly after this photograph was taken. Dengue is transmitted exclusively by mosquitoes and it's transmitted mainly by a mosquito known as Aedes aegypti. Now, Aedes aegypti is an invasive species almost everywhere around the world. It originated in northeast Africa. Aedes aegypti feeds almost exclusively on humans. It lives in and around your home. We provide a very nice environment for Aedes aegypti to live in. We are a nice blood source, a meal. We provide shelter in our homes. Plus, they breed in very small pools of water, a small thimble full of water, and you can get a mosquito breeding. And you can have those in your garden and around your house in plenty supply. So how do we control this mosquito? This is state-of-the-art technology for controlling mosquitoes today. Now, I'm sure you can see, in an enclosed environment, this would work very well. This is fogging, using insecticides. But these insecticides have to contact the mosquito to be able to kill it. Outdoors, got much less chance of this being able to contact the mosquito. They're flying around, the mist is, the insecticide's moving around. Plus, there's insecticide resistance. So even if you get contact 
of this insecticide with the mosquito, it doesn't kill it. So I'm sure it's no surprise to anybody that current technology, current methods of control are not working. And it's one of the reasons that it's increased over 30-fold since the 1950s. We need a better solution. So here we have our female in the wild. She meets a male and mates. That female then takes a blood meal and produces her offspring. In this case, larvae and pupae. These are the stages that uh, breed in the water. The pupae is where the larvae metamorphoses, like butterflies, into adults, and then you get your adults. And that's the life cycle. The life cycle takes about two to three weeks, depending on temperature. Now, what we have done is we have inserted a gene into the mosquito that makes the offspring die. So when we release a male, this male, when it mates with that female, passes on that gene to the offspring, all of the offspring. Now, we've designed it so the offspring still survive through to larvae and pupae, but they do not make it to adults. They cannot now spread disease. If you release enough of these mosquitoes over a long enough time, then you should be able to achieve population suppression or even elimination. Now, this is all really good in theory, but this is the largest mosquito factory that we know of in the world today. This factory is in Brazil, and it's run in collaboration with a company called Moscomed. This factory can produce 10 million males a week. Now, some of you may be thinking, ah, but you've just told me that the offspring die. How can you produce millions of these mosquitoes every week? Well, we have designed a mechanism to switch off the gene with an antidote. And we add this antidote to the diet in the factory, which is allows us to rear perfectly healthy mosquitoes in their millions. We can sort the males from the females. We obviously don't want to release the females because they bite and transmit disease. And then we release those males. Now, everywhere where we have released these males, we have achieved over an 80% reduction in the mosquito population. And in some cases, over 95% reduction. So our technology works. But perhaps more importantly is, is it safe and is it environmentally friendly? Well, when we release our males, they mate with the females and all the offspring die. Those males that we release, they only live four to five days. So when we stop a control program, everything dies. There's nothing left. Within two weeks, we can find no evidence that this gene is present. Plus, Aedes aegypti, this male, will only mate with females of its own species. We are not removing any other organism from the environment. And if you remember, this species is invasive around almost everywhere in the world, apart from Northeast Africa. It's spread with man around the world. We also have had independent assessment of our technology through the regulators. We've also had collaborators, independent collaborators, assess our technology. And we've also had many peer-reviewed papers. So I think we can show that it's effective, safe, and environmentally friendly. However, there is always the what-if questions. What if you don't release in the right place? What if you don't um, release enough mosquitoes? 
What if something goes wrong? You have to be in control. And this is another side to our technology. We have inserted, along with the sterility gene, a marker. Now this marker expresses in all insects that have this sterility gene present. We use a special microscope to visualize this marker. And the two larvae you can see at the bottom have inherited this marker. They're glowing a lovely red color. And the two on top haven't. So we can identify these easily. This is a very powerful tool. So now, what if you don't release in the right place? What if the driver of the van couldn't be bothered to go down that street or went down the wrong street or you're treating an area and something goes wrong? Well, what you can do is you can get the eggs in traps back from the wild, you can hatch them, and you can look at them under the microscope and look for this fluorescence. And you can say, ah, those eggs that we captured there, they haven't got this fluorescent marker present. There must be something wrong there. We must not be releasing in the right place. What if we're not releasing enough? Well, again, we can get those eggs from the environment, bring them back, and this time we look at the percentage fluorescence. How many of those are fluorescing or not? Gives us a direct measure of how successful our males are being in the wild. If it's over 50%, we know we're going to achieve control within about four to six months. If it's less than 50%, then we know we need to release more. It allows us to be more effective in our control, more cost effective. And what if something goes wrong? Well, because of this marker, we can detect it in the adults and the offspring, and we can track it. We can have traps around the field sites. We can have traps miles away. We can track how far they, they disperse. Mosquitoes only disperse about 100, 200 meters in their lifetime. And we can track that using this system. What if the offspring don't die anymore? Well, we can bring them back from the wild and we can test that. All the offspring that show the marker, we can test that they die. It's a very powerful tool. Now, one of our greatest challenges is communication. We are a small company. We are in an era of genetically modified and genetically engineered crops. Our technology is completely different. And our greatest challenge is communicating that. It's being transparent about our technology. And everyone here, being in the audience today and listening, has helped us to achieve that. So I thank you very much for listening today. Thank you.